Uh, Putin is obviously still around and not going anywhere. He has tightened control. He's become a, a total uh, autocrat. Uh, what next? And, and uh, is there a, uh, a, a rapprochement, if you will, with the Chinese? Is that a new, a new axis, Beijing-Moscow? Well, that's right, and that's something a lot of people worry about. I think when it comes to Russia, I think spying is so core to Putin and what he is as a former KGB officer, it's hard to see that changing. It's hard to see relations really changing. I mean, there have been attempts in the past to reset relations with Russia and to improve them, and they've never really worked out. Uh, I think you're right to raise that China question, because globally, that's one of the big challenges is people are saying, well, actually, in the long term, is is China not the bigger kind of challenge when it comes to national security? And that may be true, but Russia still is there. And the issue of whether Russia and China, you know, are, are they how tightly bound are they? I think that's one of the issues that people have got to grapple with in the in the coming years. And so those are some of the big strategic issues. And that's one of the things that we need uh, intelligence services for is to understand, you know, what really is the nature of that relationship and um, 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 and where is it heading? So Mm -hmm. I think in that sense, we can expect spies, whether they're Russian spies or Western spies, to be pretty busy in Mm -hmm. this field. Uh, in in the coming yeah. years, certainly they're not yeah. going to be going away. If you had, let's say, 15 minutes of the undivided attention of uh, the president, the British prime minister, the heads of the CIA and MI6 and, and similar people, and, and you could say to them... Uh, Gentlemen, since I'm sure they would be mostly men, uh, there are things in my book, Russians Among Us, that you really ought to know about, and uh, foremost among those would be what? I think a clear-headed understanding of what Russia is, what it's trying to do, and how it goes about it. And I think we do need to be clear about it and have a realistic understanding and appreciation of the nature of Vladimir Putin and Uh, the way he governs Russia and the way he uses spies. And I think uh, Mm -hmm. we need that to basically equip ourselves to deal with it. Exactly. Stay with us uh, and stay on the line. We'll speak off air. Gordon Carrera, BBC security correspondent, the book Russians Among Us. This is Westwood One. Hi there, good evening, and welcome to the Jimbo Hannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at one 866 jimbo one 866 Online, you'll find us at jimbohannonshow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jimbo Talks. And uh, this coming evening, we are going to be again covering a Democratic presidential primary debate. This one, the ninth such debate, and in this particular case, it is a prelude uh, to caucuses. Although we'll talk some about that, it's sort of a hybrid, caucuses and almost a primary. Anyway, six candidates will take the stage, and Jim Roop reports there is a newcomer among them. Michael Bloomberg has made the cut. Well, uh, thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. Bloomberg's media blitz, more than $400 million, and his campaign says it plans to spend a lot more, has him in second place in the polls heading into tonight's debate, 19%. In first Senator Bernie Sanders, who by comparison, sitting at 31 percent, has spent just a sliver of what Bloomberg has spent. Sanders has run about $10 million worth of ads. Sanders says Bloomberg's spending is simple bribes to buy the presidency. All he did is take a small part of his $60 billion, put it into TV commercials, and I guess that can get you votes. Other candidates, Vice President Joe Biden, Senators Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren, have all accused Bloomberg of trying to buy the Oval Office. Bloomberg, back in December, told CBS this morning he's not. He's just using his own money to do what everyone else is doing. What the point they're making is it's okay if they ask other people for all their money and it will help their careers. As Sanders points out, Bloomberg does have $60 billion, though. It is expected that the five veteran debaters will gang up on the former New York mayor on things like stop and frisk and redlining, which is the practice of denying things like mortgages, insurance loans, and other financial services based on geographic location rather than a person's qualifications. There's also a history of allegations of sexual harassment and lawsuits filed against him. 
His feet will probably also be held to the fire on those. He'll be joined on the debate stage by Sanders, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and Pete Buttigieg. But Michael Bloomberg might be feeling a bit alone. And I think I could do a lot of good. It will be an interesting dynamic. Jim Roop, Las Vegas. It will be that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm uh, very much looking forward to this. Uh, it is. Uh, I've always felt these debates were sort of popcorn time. Uh, sit back and enjoy them, even though, of course, in my case, I've got to take notes. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, it uh, it is sort of uh, uh, 50 yard line seats for the political Super Bowl, and. Uh, we're starting to have actual decisions made now. We've had uh, two contests. We've had some delegates selected. And, of course, uh, two more to go before Super Tuesday, March the 3rd. In the morning of March the 4th, we're going to have a much clearer picture of just where we stand. But it's going to be interesting to see if, in fact, as Bernie Sanders says, Michael Bloomberg can buy a nomination. And he, he may say that he's only uh, doing with his money what other people do with other people's money. That may be true. But it doesn't alter the fact that he is, in effect, trying to buy a nomination. And uh, it'll be curious to see if, if he's able to do so. So far, polling numbers have helped him out. Now, uh, Tom Styrer, also a billionaire, by no means as rich as uh, Bloomberg, but uh, again, a billionaire, uh, has uh, has made uh, slight dents. There have been some contests, South Carolina, for example, where he would appear to be competitive. Others where he's not. And uh, uh, it's uh, going to be very interesting to see just exactly how well he, uh, in fact, uh, stands up to his uh, fellow billionaire in terms of uh, the spending of money. Again, keeping in mind that uh, Donald Trump is also a billionaire, but Trump really didn't depend on his money. Trump got coverage in 2016 and has to a great extent in this cycle off of his mouth, not his checkbook. one 866 jimbo one 866 And let's go to Steve in Angier, North Carolina. Good evening, Steve. Welcome. Hey, Mr. Jimbo. Hope, hope the night finds you well. Yes, sir. You stole my popcorn thing. That was my my first line. I was going to say it looks like another popcorn night tomorrow. Oh, uh, had night. I but only known. I think it will be. <laughs> but the only thing we're missing, Steve, no laugh track. Somebody's got to put on one of these <laughs> debates with a laugh track. Oh, there'll be one at my house, but uh, <laughs> you won't be able to hear it. <laughs> and just, I'm going to assume the same thing maybe at your place. But uh, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a question for you, though, if it, yes, in, in your lifetime, and what's going to be interesting to me is they they got to go after Bloomberg pretty hard. They don't oh, yeah. they don't have a choice. Oh, everybody's going to be piling on Bloomberg. He's the 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 darling of the moment. Absolutely, the some of the the shine has come off of uh, Buddha Judge, despite strong finishes in the first two contests in national polling. It hasn't uh, translated yet. He he's not showing the kinds of numbers. Elizabeth Warren, of course, uh, severely stunted by her performance in the first uh, two contests. Uh, uh, Joe Biden, even more so. Uh, Bernie, I think, uh, still a lot of people. Are, are still they have trouble believing that he could actually get the nomination, and so and and Klobuchar, okay, she 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 had a third place finish in New Hampshire, and she's gotten some extra money, but she's hardly had time to spend that money in time to build an infrastructure that can compete in 14 states on Super Tuesday. So yeah, pretty much everybody has an Achilles heel, and and they're going to certainly all be going after. Bloomberg because of some of the stuff he said and and we're going to be seeing uh, in Bloomberg Steve we're going to be seeing the real live not the pre-packaged focus group tested commercial Bloomberg but the live put my foot in my mouth Bloomberg and uh, I mean okay. you could see a gaff off between Biden and Bloomberg The funny what strikes me my funny bone is is that they're going to have to uh focus their attention on on the elephant in the room, which is Bloomberg, even though they're Biden for the for the election there in Nevada, and Bloomberg is not in on the ballot in Nevada. No, that's so, very true. This is a debate before the Nevada caucuses. Bloomberg is not on the ballot, nor in the debate on the twenty fifth, uh, which is the debate in South Carolina prior to the South Carolina primary. He won't be in the, on the ballot there either. Which is going to take all of them off their original game plan, which you know is to go after Bernie or go after this. It's just going to throw the whole night 
<laughs> into a disarray. And there's going to be a and lot, I think, of piling it. on. Uh, there really is going to be, I think, a lot of piling on on Bloomberg. And there there needs to be, from the, just the standpoint of, of politics, I mean, they need to, to blunt uh, this newcomer. And, uh, yeah, I, I can expect a great deal of, of piling on. I really I really can. And, and plus, Michael Bloomberg's record has made it so easy. I mean, take your pick. What do you want to what do you want to pick on? Stop and frisk his comments about women, his comments about young black men. I mean, the list goes on and on this for the for the other Democrats. Michael Bloomberg is the gift that keeps on giving, Steve. And he put his foot in his mouth again uh, in the last day or so when he was trying to be funny and, and trying to say that everybody doesn't need to be in college, you know, but he uh, he oh. put it like, you know, go, go, go out and farm or, you know. Yeah, exactly. anybody can farm. You just dig, put a, dig a hole in the ground, stick grain. in a seed, cover it up, water it, and uh, instant corn. <laughs> I have two words for Bloomberg. Try it. <laughs> and not with $60 billion in backup money. Try it on the resources of the average American farmer. Try it, Mikey, and see how, how easy it is to do that. I mean, I heck. Four words. You're going to South Carolina, dummy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean seriously, <laughs> seriously, Steve. I, I swear to goodness, I, I, uh, you know, you know, the thing that I think amazes me the most is somebody has to actually win this. Uh, the Democrats are going to Milwaukee in July and and for four days and nights, and somebody has to walk out of there with the nomination. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure anybody wants it very much. So anyway, thanks for your shot, the, your thoughts, and uh, have the popcorn handy. Let's go to John in Moberly, Missouri, next. And good evening, John. Hey, Jim. Thanks for letting me in. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is so funny. I'm telling you, Bloomberg is in Biden. They're two the same. And they just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's all a big joke what these Democrats are doing. Who do you think will come out of this mess on that side, who do you think will come out of it? You know, at this juncture, it is uh, it is really uh, hard to know. Uh, certainly, Bernie has shown the latest surge along with Bloomberg. And at this juncture, I mean, you know, a lot of people thought that by this time it would be a, a battle between uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden for the nomination. Actually, at this point, it's a battle between Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden for who survives. And even the winner of that may not survive. So, you know, to, to tell who, I'll put it this way. You asked me on the morning of uh, Wednesday, March the 4th, and uh, I'll give you a much better idea because we'll have two-thirds of the delegates needed for nomination chosen the night before. Then we're going to know a lot. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I would have thought Bernie unlikely. And I have to say at the moment, Bernie, possibly. Bernie, possibly. Uh, but uh, again... <laughs> I think if the Democratic National Committee can find a way, for their sake, I hope it's legal this time, find a way to stop Bernie and not just flat out cheat, uh, then uh, maybe one of the others. But the question is, which one? Buttigieg? Klobuchar? I, I don't know. My, my dream ticket, I have to tell you this, my dream ticket, I think, would be the, the all-too-short uh, ticket, uh, John, and that would be uh, uh, Bloomberg Klobuchar. The uh, nobody here is over five and a half feet tall ticket. That would be my dream. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. Because I can't have my my real dream ticket, which is the former senator from Minnesota, and uh, the former uh, standard bearer for the Green Party. Uh, that is to say, Al Franken and Jill Stein. That's my dream ticket, just for the bumper sticker. Franken Stein. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show, one 866 jimbo one 866 And uh, another uh, Democratic debate this coming evening in the changing cast of characters. Oh, all those names from the past of Beto O'Rourke. Remember President Beto? Uh, that ain't going to happen, but uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Janet in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska now. Good evening, Janet. Well, hi, Mr. Bohannon. Good evening. Good evening. Um, okay. This business with Bloomberg and farming 
He doesn't yeah. have a clue. <laughs> I Before know. you can even plant the seed in the field, you have to prepare the dirt. And you start that by plowing, then you pack it, and then you 